So how do we handle failures? Do you let them destroy you or do you let them drive you? Come on, Pastor. Do you use them as a stepping stone to draw you closer to the Lord? Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, one thing we forget is the fact that it was almost a year before David repented before the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Because the child was born. Nine months. See, he probably thought he was safe. He was gotten away with it. All those things were great. But one thing I love about the Lord is that He loves us enough that Hallelujah. He confronts things in our life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Why? Because He wants to have a relationship with us. Amen. And He doesn't want anything between you and Him. How much greater could He love us whenever He Himself was that sacrifice? How much greater could His love be when He Himself took upon Himself the very things that we did? Amen. That's how much He wants you. Hallelujah. Did you know you're wanted this morning? Amen. God wants your life. He wants your heart. He created you for a purpose. And the worst thing that we can do is to continue to allow things in our life to taunt us and keep us from the destiny and the calling and that fellowship that God has for us. You know, some of us just continue to allow Goliath to continue to taunt and continue to stay alive. See, there's really two things often that we think of when we think of David's life, and one of them is David and Goliath, and the other is Bathsheba. Isn't that, that a shame that we think of those things? And one, David overcame the giant, but you can rightly say this was the giant that slew David. But aren't you glad that failure isn't fine? Second Corinthians says, but we, we have this treasure in earthly vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God yes. and not of us. Yes. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despair. And despair. Persecuted, not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. 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 See, it's how we respond to failure in our life that really shapes <laughs> the destiny in our life because we see that David became a man after God's own heart. Despite this failure in his life, he got up, he repented, and he still became what God wanted him to be. We need to learn several things about this here this morning. And number one is that God knows where you are. Yes. yes. He knew where to find David and he knows where to find you. Yes, he does. Amen. Unfortunately, sometimes on our side is whenever we walk in sin or we, we do sin, a lot of times we think that we can walk out and just walk back in. But sometimes when we walk out in the dark, we can't find the door. That's why we need to hit Him to find us. Hallelujah. The biggest de de deception of the devil is to think, well, I'm just going to play with the world that's right. and come on back anytime. Uh, yeah, that's right. I've seen a lot of people that thought that, mm -hmm. that are not serving God today. Yes. Starts off little by little and then leads down a road where they don't even know how to come back. And they'll even tell you that, I, I just don't know how. But they don't feel like God can receive them back. See, Satan desires to 
destroy really that which is our purpose. We are created in God's image and the devil is out in this world destroying Amen. that image. Marring the image of man. Yes. Making them perverse, perverted, nice. twisted, cruel. All of these things that man has become. We were created in His image and we should shine forth His glory. Yeah. That's your purpose. God knows where you are and He knows how to find you. Again, we find David's repentance in Psalm 51. It says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Wad out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Hallelujah. Notice all that. My is in there. He wasn't blaming anybody else. But he took personal responsibility. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me against you. And you only have I sinned. And done this evil in your sight. That you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. <coughs> Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, yes, that the yes. bones you have broken may rejoice. Hallelujah. Hide your face from my sin and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. Yes. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Hallelujah. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from yes. me. Restore. Somebody say restore. Restore. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Hallelujah. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted Amen. to you. Amen. Deliver me from the guilt of the blood bloodshed, O God. The God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Hallelujah. See, God doesn't de desire you to just come to church and, and do certain rituals or or maybe if I if I just keep doing all these things and, and do a bunch of stuff for God, maybe then he'll forgive me. He doesn't care about any of those things. There's only one thing that the Lord looks for, and that's a broken and contrite heart. Hallelujah. For us to be broken over the things that has grieved Him. Yes. Purge me with hyssop. You know what that speaks of? It's really a glorious thing to, to think of really what he mentions here. Because I think of the use of the hyssop in the sense of whenever they would cleanse lepers, they would take a the priest would take a a clay vessel and there was two birds that they would take, and one bird they would stuff down into this vessel. And they would kill this bird, and from that from that blood would take hyssop and stir it in there and put it on the other bird and then set the, set the bird free. And that speaks of Jesus coming in a jar of clay, a vessel of clay, us. He came to be just like us. He didn't belong here. He belonged in heaven. But he humbled himself and became like us. 